Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamu alaikum my brothers and sisters I hope you're all praying your salahs as well as looking to the Quran and Hadith for guidance in your everyday life If you're watching this video and it's salah time please pause it and go pray and come back when you're done Please also check out the description section of this video to get my new dawa products and to support the channel I was sent a clip by a channel member of a recent interview Muslim brother Muhammad Hijab did whilst in South Africa Brother Muhammad is a British Muslim with Egyptian roots that is a respected debater as well as a consistent defender of the deen against the enemies of Islam. I must say that I respect him very much and always learn something when I hear him speak. In this interview, Brother Muhammad stated there is a correct method of memorizing the Quran and in particular singled out the Pakistani, Bangladeshi and Somali communities for doing it incorrectly and even went as far as to say these communities shouldn't do it at all if they are not going to do it in the way he sees as correct. If you would like me to react to any of your suggested videos, please become a channel member via the join button on my page. Let's Roll the clip. This praise of people who have memorized the Quran or read it and they don't know what it means. Mm. For example, so some of them are ummis, and this means not illiterate, but those who don't know, they don't know the Quran except for a little bit and they're just speculating on its meanings. So, yani, not reading the Quran and not knowing what it means. Is I'm not going to say it's completely madmoon from a shara'i or fiqhi perspective as haram, يعني, but I'm saying that if someone is spending so much energy doing memorization of the Quran without knowing its meaning at all mm-hmm. and is being taken out of school to do this, I think uh, this is uh, not this is not sufficient mm-hmm. with all due respect. I think that you know we need to let, let them know what's going on because. The fact of the matter is, I've met a lot of people in Britain, uh, in the Somali community, in the Bengali community, and the Pakistani community, and others, who have memorized the Quran and become murtad. Oh, no. Memorizing the Quran, yes, it does have its spiritual benefits, but really, You know, do they not ponder over the Quran with care or are on their hearts locks? So the idea of Memorizing the Quran without at least a supplement of okay, this is what the verses mean, this is what Surah Al Fatah. And if someone imagine memorizing the whole Quran effectively but not knowing what Surah Al Fatah means, I think that's a shame actually. I think that's a disgrace, to be I'll be honest with you. Uh, that shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, and it, there needs to be some level of understanding. There has to be some. I'm not saying you need to be Mufassir, but there has to be some level of understanding. Definitely. Otherwise, you're, you're putting the child in a situation. Where they can just be like those guys that just memorize the whole Quran and then leave the religion of Islam. Uh, and that's it. And the thing is, what creates a motivation? Because we all know memorizing the Quran is not where as much difficulty is. There's more difficulty in retaining it, like for the rest of your life. And the Prophet told us that it can run away faster than the, 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 the camel and so on. So it's in muraja'ah and so on. But who's go- why would someone incorporate muraja'ah? Or revision into their daily life unless they were motivated by uh, they had a spiritual a religious impetus so to get the spiritual religious impetus they need to be aware of how, what the Quran is saying mm. uh, its connection with the seerah and these kind of things and they need to apply it in their lives that's what the Sahabas did actually to be honest with you I mean, a lot of the Sahabas didn't memorize the Quran and we have very clear narrations that the ones uh, who memorized Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Amran and Surah Al-Nisa and so on, they were, f- they were favored among the, yani, they, were, they were seen as big time, mm. big time scholars actually. Mm. And we have, uh, we have uh, what do you call it, a narration saying that the one who died and there was not enough, what do you call it, sheets mm. to cover their bodies, the one who had memorized more Quran, would be, which means that they, didn't, they both weren't equal, equal, yeah. equal in it. So uh, there's many things like that, yani, uh, the, the, especially the Mujahideen and Sahaba. They, there's very limited evidence to show they did have yeah. the whole Quran. Yeah. So the point is, and there's a famous uh, f- uh, saying of uh, Amr al Khattab that you know it took this many years to memorize the Quran and so on. You could say Allah Zahiri. Uh, to be honest with that one, there's a bit of discussion because he also got his hadith where he's saying that well, I I heard Surah Al-Furqan being mentioned and then it was uh, it was Al Ala Ahruf Ghair Al Ladi Akra which means he knew Surah Al-Fuqan and Surah Al-Baqarah. That's a long 
you don't memorize like Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Al-Furqan. So yeah. I wouldn't say someone like Amr al-Khattab didn't, didn't memorize the Quran. Yani, all the, the Sahabiyat didn't memorize. But I'm saying that there's a lot of Sahabis. I mean, Ibn Hajar mentions 4,000 Sahabis that have a detailed biography. Obviously in the Battle of Yamama, when, the, when all these Hafad died, mm. why is it that it was such a travesty if everyone memorized the Quran? Mm. So exactly. What I'm trying to say is that it's not a prerequisite to memorize the entire Quran in order to maintain strong faith. You could memorize less... I would rather have my children memorize five juz, understand them, and have good hefz of them. They memorize the whole Quran, and then it comes out of their memory in two years' time. They don't understand a thing of it. Mm. But that's me. But every parent will be different. I, I would obviously prefer my children to know the whole thing and have some information. Like Yani, as the uh, the ulama or the usuli say, al jama' awlam al tarjih. If you can have things together. You know, it's what brothers say. Uh, shall I marry her? Shall I marry her? I say, Jama'a <laughs> Allah. <laughs> but it's the same thing. If you can, well, it's, it doesn't, it's not like a, because some people think, oh, you get them when their brain is fresh and young mm-hmm. and whatever. And then you, why, why, Yani? Their brain is fresh and young, but it's also capable of understanding the verses of the Quran. Mm-hmm. It is, it, it's capable. So, Yani, give them at least a supplement. Give them, okay, if you, I would rather, if there's three hours have a day or six hours, I don't know how many hours they do. About six hours. Six yeah. hours. Okay, yeah. then yani, maybe it's better to do four hours and two hours of uh, a bit of discussion about Something. it, yani, mm. to be honest. So it is clear from this clip that the brother is making complete sense. This is not an Arab superiority thing. It's simply the correct way to memorize the Quran. I especially like the point he made about how he would rather have his kids know the meaning of a small number of surahs or ayahs they've memorized rather than them memorize the whole Quran without knowing the meaning of any of it. Brother Muhammad and other brothers and sisters with origins from Arab speaking nations are blessed to be able to completely understand the language and find it easier to translate Quranic Arabic. However, all Muslims from non-Arabic speaking countries and even reverts should make the effort to learn Arabic as it is the language our holy book is written in and the language our Salah prayers are recited in. We should also make arrangements to teach our children Arabic as well as teach them to read and recite it. For all the Hafizes and Alamas who have memorized the Quran, that is fantastic. But if they don't know the meaning of what they have memorized, then it loses its depth, beauty, message and purpose. If you don't know what your Salah prayers mean, you're not in tune with what you're truly saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence I urge you brothers and sisters at the very least we should learn exactly what we are saying in our salah prayers in our native tongues as it will make our prayers more meaningful and our connection to God much stronger. Please like, comment, share, subscribe and turn on notifications as I'll be posting new content daily. Jazakallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.